Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is Big Max Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge, and I haven't painted anything in a while, but this week's video we are doing a Warcry figure from the Realm of Beasts. I really like these figs, I think they look really cool, and they sort of remind me of for, uh, the Forsaken from Skyrim. Uh, so that's the sort of theme I'm going to go for, so there's going to be some yellow hues and other random bits in there as well. So that's going to be my reference point here. First off, we're going to use Brown Leather by Scale 75. And we're going to use that as the skin tone, as I don't do a dark skin uh, very often at all. Then what we're going to do is add a Seraphine Sepia Wash, but this is a game colour version. One I don't use often, that's why it doesn't have the lower third at the top of the screen there. We're then going back to the Scale 75 brown leather to start bringing up those muscle details. This paint is really, really thin, and we are using a wet palette for these videos um, just to keep the paint as smooth as possible. Although we do run into a few problems later because I didn't clean the model properly and it's been on the shelf and there's dust in there as well, um, which you'll see on the model later on. Now I'm going to add Scale 75 orange leather into the brown leather. Um, that's going to be the second highlight on the skin since we put a wash on it that would make it the second one I really have been looking forward to painting this fig um, it's not my best paint job as I spent weeks and weeks doing the Fabius Bile video and a few other things as well next up to get some of the dust out of there which you can now see on the camera I'm going to use Model Air Burnt Umber I'm trying to sort of paint the dust, I guess, but um, it just accumulated during the wash, and that seems to reoccur quite a bit on this model. Um, in hindsight, I should have washed washed the model properly, but it's been sat on a shelf for a while waiting for me to paint it. Next, we're going to make a mixture of Moonray Flesh by Scale 75 and Orange Leather. This is just to lighten the flesh even more. End result of the skin, by the end of the video I was quite happy with it. It's not too bad. But uh, sort of should have kept to this tone I think, but uh, then I didn't want it too light. So we're going to go back and forth a few times over the skin. And as I was saying with this skin tone, it's a bit light for my liking now. So I'm going to add another Seraphine Sepia, not a Games Workshop Seraphine Sepia wash now. And that's going to add a, a little bit more of a, a warmth to it, as I tend to make the uh, the darker skins a bit too pale, and you only want pale where the light hits the model as it diffuses the colour of the skin. Now we're going to use Orange Leather, Brown Leather by Scale 75 and add Ungo Flesh by Games Workshop. And I found at this point this seemed to be going towards the right tone for the highlights. Next, I was relatively happy with the skin, so I'm going to move on to XV88 by Games Workshop. I'm going to start doing all the uh, bandages on the arms, all the wrappings even. Pretty much all the wrappings except for the uh, one on the handle of the weapon, as I want to do something different with that one. I want to keep this really thin if you want your straps to look decent. You don't want to just blob loads of uh, XV88 on there. And again, I'm going to use Games Workshop's Seraphine Sepia. That will be a reoccurring theme during this video, as um, it's sort of pulling all the other colours together. Which does make this quite a difficult paint job, as I kept painting myself into a corner, trying to use such a uh, more muted palette for absolutely everything. And I do apologise if my uh, voice here is a bit raspy. So we're going to start on the cloak now, and we're going to use Scale 75's Red Leather. Also, as you can see there, I'm going to put it on the fur as well. I want to do the fur on this model in a slightly different way. I also wasn't sure what colour to do the cloak, hence just covering the fur and the cloak in red leather, just to pick out a base colour that's slightly a natural, earthy colour. Next is Games Workshop's Monfang Brown. 
which is one I, you'll always see me using for bone, although I did take the bone in a different direction this time, just as a bit of an experiment to see what I could do. Again, you're going to want to put this on in a whole heap of layers. It's always best to do it in multiple layers, you don't want to obscure any of your details. Now we're going to add Desert Yellow by Model Color into that Mournfang Brown, and that's going to be our first highlight. You will also notice during this video there's bits of the model that aren't done and then they will just be done. Um, they're basically just a colour match for other parts that were finished. Um, as at the time I wasn't quite sure what colour I wanted to do those. Next is Games Workshop's Bale or Brown. And I'm going to use that as the first highlight for the straps. On this model I was trying to focus a lot on whether something was a, a colour change or a actual highlight change. Um, so this is generally a colour change and it's going to go all over most of them straps. Over three quarters of the straps will be done in that colour, just leaving a little bit on the underneath or in the most uh, deep areas. Except where the surf and sepia sits, so not the recesses but just anywhere that's rounded. Next I'm going to mix Panzer Aces Yellow Rust into Model Color Desert Yellow. As you can see the bone is a uh, bone color, but um, it's not quite bone, it's got a sort of orangey hue to it at the moment. As I was saying the bone was a bit of an experiment this time. Next we're going to just use Model Color Desert Yellow. That's because I wanted the teeth on the weapons to look slightly different, so... I just went straight for the desert yellow over black rather than using the Mournfang base. Once that's done, we're going to give all those bone sections two watered down Seraphin Sepia washers by Games Workshop. As this was an experiment, I decided it was best off to do um, a very thin layer. Then I decided it just needs one more layer. So it's really up to you how far you take that for the bone. Uh, it's always best to start off with thinner washers. And next we're going to start putting in a army painter strong tone into the fur just to give it a little bit of depth. Now we're going back to the desert yellow by model color but we're going to add a bit of model color sky grey. So that's going to make the teeth, as they get highlighted, a uh, different tone to the rest of the weapons. So that's the horns and teeth, anything on the weapons like that. I also made the mistake here of thinking the weapon wasn't fully made of bone and thought it had a, a wooden piece and I was going to do part of it in wood, but over time decided you know, it just works better as one piece and I think that's what it's supposed to be. Now we're going to use Model Color Desert Yellow plus Yellow Rust by Panzer Aces. And we're going to start highlighting up the edges of the axe even further now. Not even the edges, about the last eighth of it. Start bringing that color up. Then the fur I found really interesting. We're going to use Scale 75's Red Leather. But we're going to start painting the Red Leather onto the fur sections individually and very softly rather than, rather than using a dry brush. Now we're going to use model colour red leather which as you can tell is a very different colour for the underneath of the pelt because there's a actually some skin under there or some hide that's been uh, tanned so I thought I'd start that with the model colour red leather, which does look a bit orange at the moment, but later on when we mix colours in, it will it will start to highlight and look more like um, animal flesh. Going back to the straps now, as, a, as always I'm waiting for paint to dry, so I jump from one thing to the other. This is Games Workshop, Zamzi Desert. Now this is going to be a highlight doing the... I don't know, the top half or quarter really depends on how you want to do it um, of the highlights on all the straps 
with this color you want to make sure you get the edges of each strap as well and then start blending upwards uh, to the highlight area and we're going to move on to the uh, straps or the leather straps in the middle now and i started with scale 75's bosch chestnut Uh, which I believe is from the wooden leather set of scale 75 so it does work really well for this one but sometimes you'll use scale 75 paints and they'll dry or they'll layer over each other and go a colour you weren't expecting which is uh, something I've found with a few combinations now we're going to add scale 75's orange leather into that Bosch chestnut just a small amount at the moment start working on the edges of the straps and the tops of the straps I'm also putting little lines across the straps just to bring out those uh, details so the Bosch chestnut will sit in the bottom there and uh, act as a natural shade already before we even put a wash on Now we're going to add another another small amount of orange leather by scale 75 into that same mix. I'm basically just covering less and less area space and now you can see it's getting further away from the skin tone and the oranges are really starting to bring that out. Now I've got to say I did really enjoy uh, the challenge of painting such muted colours all together without anything standing out too much. And then we're just going to use orange leather on its own. Again, I'm still putting those little creases and divots into the side of the straps. Using the orange leather, but just making them smaller and smaller. So the straps look a bit more weathered and worn. Next up, I decided to uh, start blocking in the straps on the axe, so I used Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop. It was this point when I started really paying attention to this part that I realised um, it wasn't a bunch of bones stuck to a, a wooden handle. After that, I'm going to highlight all those raised areas with... Bane Blade Brown by Games Workshop and don't forget to do the couple of uh, bits of strap that go up into that middle section there I do leave the underneath pretty much uh, Steel Legion Drab because uh, when we put a wash in that's going to add some extra details there too and uh, now it's a wash of Agrax, Agrax Earthshade I think it's going to be an Agrax Earthshade on the strips for the handle at the same time as well although I cut that bit of fudge short because you can't go wrong with a good Agrax Earthshade wash obviously really thin this down so you don't spoil any of your previous work yes I am it looks like I did put that on there as well. So then we're going to go back to the Bane Blade Brown. And uh, re-highlight the Bane, Bane Blade Brown sections. But uh, just again taking up a little less space there. I always start with the very edges of the fabric. And then the tops of it um, with very watered down paint. That way you can blend it ever so slightly easier. Now we're going to use red leather again but we're going to add scale 75's walnut into that and I really liked using this technique actually although it was quite time consuming it let me keep in control of uh, the pelt rather than just doing a dry brush I could have finished the pelt off later on with a dry brush but or took it up even further but I was kind of enjoying the way I was doing this it helps you control the colour and the lighting now we're just going to add a little bit more walnut into that mix 
and as you can tell I'm going to start now from the uh, top sections of fur so they get the most paint and as my brush runs out of paint I'm going to start working my way down this is going to help naturally add less paint to the uh, model as you go giving a shaded and a highlighted area then we're going to add a little bit of Rakhal flesh into that mix so that will now be that red leather and walnut mix with a little bit of Rakhal flesh and that's to actually take some of the colour out so there will be a highlights where the light is now diffused I do have an interesting colour change now and uh, saturation is something I'm focusing on quite a bit more with models Right, so I decided I was going to do some freehand on the back of this, but this was before I even decided what colour I wanted the cloak. So I was just checking out some ideas, and this freehand was in Model Air Metallic Rust, in the hope that if I put a, a few really thin layers on there, um, sorry, if I put a few really thin layers over there, uh, over the gold, it would show through ever so slightly and be a good guideline, although that didn't end up happening. Next, I decided to start the helmet as these big sections of black were starting to distract me from the rest of the model. Um, they were, you know, the quite contrast, so I used Scale 75's Thrash Metal, which is a metal with a sort of a uh, greenish yellowish hue to it. It's not like a blue shiny metal, and I thought a bit more worn and a bit more weathered would just look good for this model. Next up, I decided to go for Scale 75's Arbuckle Brown for the um, cloak. Uh, probably not the best choice, or maybe the next layer I put on, I should have put over more of the cloak. As you can see, I've got that really watered down. And I'm also still getting little bits of dust now, even though I did try and clean the model on that cloak, and it really messes up your painting. So make sure your model's um, clean before you start. I was just lazy and picked it up off the shelf. So now we're going to add Scale 75's black leather into the Arbuckle Brown. This is the transition I was saying didn't work that well. Instead of doing it as a transition from light, it should just be a very thin layer over the whole, over the whole cloak. That way, in the very recesses, you can see the Arbuckle showing through the underneath. And now we're just going to add a lot more black leather by scale 75 into that same mix. So it's barely got any Arbuckle Brown in it. If you want some different ways to do cloaks, the Noxious Blight Bringer that we did, um, that had a very interesting purple looking cloak on it. But for this one I wanted a, a dark weathered purple cloak. See I thought the purple would work well as a contrast for these uh, yellow hues I've got and they complement the flesh tone as well. So. It was a colour color palette choice, but I didn't want it to be as purple as the Noxious Blight Bringer that we did. And once we've built that up a bunch, we're going to add a Games Workshop Drusy, Vi Drus <coughs> a Games Workshop Drusy Violet and Null Oil Mix as a wash. Nice and thin. I do go a little bit excessive here, but uh, off camera I just pull the excess off there. Because you don't want it pulling at the bottom. And then we're just going to go back to scale 75, black leather again as a highlight now. Seeing as we've uh, changed the rest of the tone, and sort of darkened it down. I do find Drusy Violet's far too purple by Games Workshop, although it does have its place in, in that range. But I always prefer to add some null oil to it just to darken it down, make it a bit more natural purple. Now we're going to add Scale 75's Landanis Grey into the black leather. As you can see, you can see how thin that pink is on my thumb there. And we're just going to pull from the place where we don't want the highlight to the place with the very last remainders of what's left on the brush. That's why I wipe so much off on my thumb. You don't really want to do big strokes on this, it's something I forgot about. It's like little strokes, let that dry from the bottom and then build up layer over layer. And that helps the transition a lot better. Now we're going to use model colour desert yellow plus model colour sky grey. With quite a bit more sky grey in it now. 
and gently highlight those teeth and horns. But I'm just going to say they're all teeth, I think. Um, that's what I sort of envisioned them as. And as you can see, that gives the teeth a, a nice bright colour, but it still doesn't take away too much from the uh, original paint scheme there. Next, we're just going to use red leather again by scale 75, because why not? And I decided to do the boots. And at this point, you can tell I've also done the horns, and the horns are being done in the same fashion as everything else, except the middle horn. So it's the same colour as the rest of the bone. Now we're going to use Scale 75's red leather again, but add a little bit of sky grey by model colour. This is something I've really been getting into recently with my painting, is mixing the same sort of colours to keep the palette very um, similar, and keep the hues and tones very close, but distinguished just by mixing different colours in, like I did with the uh, Emperor's Children World Eater Possessed. I only mixed a few colours into the other colours to get that scheme. Right, so now we're on to model colour beige. As that's quite a, a flat, bright yellow, a very pastel-y yellow. And I'm just starting to touch up the uh, very top edges of the uh, straps now. Then a good old Agraxa shade wash on those boots. That's just going to help blend those uh, two colours that we put on there and the highlights together and also add a little bit more depth in the recesses. A very, a very, very thin wash will always help with your blending and your transitions. So maybe when working out your palette, leave some space for that so you can move that around. I'll just work it in there. Now we're going to use Gorthor Brown plus brown leather by scale 75, Gorthor Brown being a Games Workshop paint. And we're going back to the skin now, as it was taking me a while to find another way of highlighting that skin, because the skin started to look a little bit flat in comparison to everything else. And as you can see, the model is starting to really take shape at this point. Next, we're going to use that same combination. We're going to add model colour sand brown to that. And that's going to mute that skin tone just that little bit more. So uh, instead of looking like a colour transition, it looks, where the, it looks like the light diffuses off the skin. Now I'm going to use Model Air Metallic Rust for the you know, freehand, which by the way I am terrible at. Um, I was working in a very small workspace there as well. And using metallics as a colour was probably not a good idea. Uh, I do wish I'd changed that. At the time the colour worked, but um, I didn't get the result I want, as it's uh, a lot harder to work with metallic paints than any of the others. As you can see, I've marked it all off and uh, started to do some arrows of chaos on there. And I've gone round with a very fine brush and some black paint. And now I'm going to add Model Air Metallic Gold to the rust to start adding in those uh, first highlights. But uh, for freehand, it's a very tricky spot as um, it's on a cloak, so it moves around a lot. Next, I'm just going to add more of the Model Air Metallic Gold into that rust. And, you know, just trying to follow the flow of the cloak there, putting the highlights in those positions. Yeah, I did enjoy this model to, for the most part, just trying out some new techniques and practicing some stuff I already knew but needed some more work. Then, of course, I'm working with metallics. I'm going to blend, blend that together with an Agrax Earth Shade Wash. Not so much a wash because you don't want to drown it. Um, but I'm just going to glaze over it and use it as a filter, take away some of that shininess. I just wanted to break the cloak up, but also pull the cloak into the model. Now we're just going to go back to the rust and model air metallic gold mix that we previously had. And, um, it was a very difficult design for me to even 
try starting some freehand with but uh, I'm gonna try and put some more of that in other videos as well or just their own videos just till I get the uh, knack of it a bit more next we're gonna add we're gonna add Moonstone Alchemy by a scale 75 into the model air metallic gold and I think that will be the uh, last highlight for that I do wish I'd picked a, a different colour though but um, I was trying to make him look a bit regal because he does stand out from the rest of the uh, Warcry unit he comes with next we're going to use Games Workshop's Storm Vermin Fur as you can see I started the uh, bird skull on there but it was very difficult to get that on camera properly and keep it in focus so I'm going to show you me doing most of these colours on the horns at the top and the reason I didn't do all the horns on the top the same colour was it's got three sets of horns so why not change one of them up next I'm going to use Dawnstone as a highlight for those bone sections and the horns as I just wanted those to uh, contrast everything else and stand out I was getting a bit much with the original bone colour that I was using now I'm going to highlight with Administerium Grey by Games Workshop again I'm doing the skull and the horns just doing the raised areas the top of the beak there the top of the uh, eye socket and the top of the forehead now to add a, a little bit of depth to all of those we're going to use a, a watered down Games Workshop's Null Oil I do like to mix my uh, washers in a shot glass and that's what you can see in the background there on the camera we'd usually use some uh, thinner rather than water but we have run out and it's a bit of a pain at the moment to get more in so now we're going to go back to the Administerium Grey and at this point that's now going to give a much better contrast just highlighting small areas that have had Administerium Grey but in a smaller area really bring out the shape of the top of that skull next we're going to add sky grey into the administerium grey and sky grey again is by model colour and that's probably the final highlight for those parts maybe not I then water down some agrax earth shade just to add a little bit of colour and also during that process um, I put a agrax earth shade on the metal parts that we did and a null oil wash at the same time because I, I've not really done anything with that yet but I wanted to change the colour of that now we're going to use scale 75's orange leather which we've been using quite a lot and we're going to start using that as the highlight for the underneath flesh as we've not done anything on that yet it's not too dissimilar from the previous colour but uh, it does make a slight difference the way it curves and uh, concaves there pointing out that's the bit where I want the most highlight on now we're going to add scale 75 resurrection flesh into the orange leather and uh, that's why I put the orange leather down as a base because once we start mixing it we get a much better more realistic colour and uh, the tran it transitions nice and smooth next up it's just going to be scale 75 resurrection flesh on its own maybe a bit of a jump there it will dry a little bit darker so it won't stand out too much and even if it does we're going to tone it all together with a reclam flesh shade watered down after that I'm going to switch to the top of the ornament on the top of his horns and I'm going to use Games Workshop Brass Scorpion for the star As, um, it seems quite decorative and important uh, because of its position so I thought it would be a, a bit of a 
shinier metal than the uh, silvers that he has. After that, I'm just going to add a Agrax Earthshade wash to the star. I also did the straps on the star as well, the same as the straps on his um, on his axe, just to make those match. After that, ah, sorry, while that's drying, I'm going to go back to a Resurrection Flesh again. Because if you remember, we've just put a wash on that, so we can now highlight that up even further. Again, just very specific places, the very top edge there and the underneath that's really pronounced and flips forward. And we haven't done much with the helmet, so it's had a couple of washes, so we're going to go back to scale 75, thrash metal. Then we're going to highlight that with Model Air Metallic Steel. Now that includes any of the metal parts, they were all done the same except for the head jewellery. Now I'm going to use Scale 75's Moonstone Alchemy as a highlight for the star. Very gently, because it's quite a jump from the previous colours. It's basically just going to be an edge highlight. The item's very small. And uh, decided to treat these as uh, feathers, so I went for a model colour, pale grey-blue, or pale blue-grey. I can't remember which way that's supposed to be written. Uh, I was being lazy at this point. There should have probably been a different undercoat. Um, then another oil wash. And it's quite difficult to get a colour like that to go over black. So obviously I put it on a bit thick. But I was just trying to get this guy finished. He's been on my desk a long time. Then we're going to use a pale grey blue again. And add a little bit of sky grey. As an edge highlight. Uh, if I had the patience, I would have tried to do some uh, feather markings down them, but I probably wouldn't have been able to get them on camera anyway. And just to finish the claws off, I'm going to throw on a Games Workshop Dryad Bark to make them a bit more or a bit more reddish compared to the rest of the pelt, even though it has an undertone of red. And then just to tone those down, because I basically just did the tips and the tops, uh, a null oil, just to smooth those off there and uh, make them look a bit more black. And we have reached the end of the video. I know it was a long one. Um, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I did enjoy the model for the most part, although using a lot of the same colours there did get a little bit tedious. Uh, and I kept painting myself into a corner. But here he is, finished, not fully based, because uh, we're probably just going to give him away to someone and they can base him however they would like and finish painting that rock however they'd like as well. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you did. If you haven't subscribed already, you should. We're bringing videos out every week. It used to be two a week. Uh, at the moment, we can't do that for obvious reasons. Everyone's really busy. And it's difficult to get into the studio. So a big thanks if you watched all the way to the end, guys. Uh, we do appreciate that, as well as hitting that like button and subscribing. Uh, we won't be able to do this video without our patrons, so a big thank you to the Oak Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hoff, Bauer, Dwak, Mark, Dave and Tom. You are our top paying patrons and you guys are awesome. If you want to check out our Patreon and help support the channel, um, that would be great. Because without our patrons we wouldn't be able to uh, buy the Warcry box set when we did. This will probably be the last Warcry video for a while. Um, but yeah, the Patreon support really does help this channel as obviously we need to get new models in and variable types for everybody all the time. Don't forget to check out our eBay store as well where we sell uh, resin bases and lots of other random bits and pieces but mainly bases nowadays. 
And talking of random shops like our eBay shop, big thank you to The Outpost. Uh, they're our affiliate link. So if you follow the link in the description where all the other ones are to The Outpost and purchase anything, they give us store credit at no extra cost to you. And The Outpost already gives you 15 to 20% off all hobby supplies. Well, I think that's enough waffle from me. I have no idea what video I'm doing next. Hopefully it'll be a conversion corner video. I'm really hoping uh, the parts I want arrive so I can start working on that. But we'll have to wait and see. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.